So in this video, I'm going to introduce neurons by talking about their overall structure and then setting up the conditions at rest for them to fire electrical action potentials, which I'm going to talk about in the second video. So let's talk about the overall neurons structure first. There are sort of three main regions I want you to know about. There are the dendrites, and the dendrites are kind of these little branches here, and the dendrites are going to receive a signal from a previous neuron, or if they're a sensory neuron, just from whatever it is they're set up to detect. Uh, you've got the axon then, which is kind of a long, thin tube that then sends an electrical signal, perhaps to the next neuron, to communicate information to it. And then you've got the cell body in between, and the cell body is just going to contain the nucleus, the DNA, the organelles. Um, these are where all the proteins are going to be made. Um, sometimes axons are very long, and if they're going to be these really important proteins in their membranes that we're going to talk about here very soon, then the cell body's got to manufacture all those proteins and eventually walk them down the entire length of that axon. So you got the three main regions, and then the other thing I just want to briefly highlight is this stuff in yellow wrapped around the axon. So that's called the myelin, um, and axons progressively get myelinated um, throughout a person's kind of early life. Um, and as it turns out, the myelin is created by a separate cell, so you actually see a little nucleus here. So it's sort of a support cell that, that makes the myelin around the neuron's axon. Um, but essentially, the, the myelin's purpose is to be like a fatty insulator. Um, just like we wrap rubber around electrical cords, it's going to enab enable the electricity to travel through the electrical wiring faster. It's going to be the same thing with the ions traveling down our axon. And I'll talk more about that when we talk about the electrical signal in video two. Okay, so just one last structural thing that's important here is that when a neuron sends an electrical signal down its axon to the next neuron, those uh, two neurons almost connect together, but there is a bit of a gap in between the two neurons, and so that's called a synapse. And a synapse is where neurons, uh, the, the sending neurons axon sends information to the receiving neurons dendrites, and as it turns out, that's going to be through the release of a chemical that we're going to call a neurotransmitter. And so I'll actually talk more about that in the third video. Um, but the electricity, I just want to note here, only travels within one particular neuron. Okay, and then the last thing I just want to highlight is the overall organization of the nervous system. So there's really just a one-way information flow um, in the nervous system as a whole. There might be sensory neurons set up to detect a specific sense from the environment. Maybe your eye neurons are, are uh, picking up light right now. Maybe your auditory neurons are picking up sound waves. Uh, but you also have internal sensors detecting things, like say, is your blood pH changing or is it within acceptable um, tolerances right now? Um, and those are constantly sending electrical signals to interneurons. So interneurons are neurons in your sp uh, brain or spinal cord. Um, and sometimes there are multiple layers of interneurons. So they're going to process that information and decide what to do with it. Um, and then interneurons sometimes might talk to motor neurons if we need to move in response. So for example, if I put my hand on a hot stove, I want to quickly tell uh, motor neurons to then tell muscles to contract so that I move my arm um, in appropriate response. So again, one-way flow, neurons never talk back to the neuron that's sending it information. Okay, so now that we've covered the basic structure here, let's get set up to talk about how neurons send electrical action potentials or impulses uh, within themselves. So as I really emphasized a lot this semester, electricity is nothing more than the movement of particles with charge all in a certain direction. So we're going to see that the two major charged particles in this story are going to be sodium ions, Na+, and potassium ions, K+. What we're going to do in this video is we're going to talk about how we set up the conditions so that they can um, uh, create the electrical signal. And like I said in video two, we'll talk about how those ions actually move um, to during the action potential.
So how do we get set up in REST? REST is when a neuron isn't sending an electrical signal, but it's got to set itself up so that the neuron can. So here is a quick little cartoon. Um, I'm zooming in on the membrane of the neuron. This could be at the dendrites or the cell body or the axon. Um, you see that we've got proteins embedded within this membrane. I'll talk about those in just a minute. You see that I've got sodium here in blue squares and potassium represented as red triangles. So there are kind of uh, three major types of proteins that are embedded in neural membranes. Uh, there are channels that let uh, things like sodium and potassium diffuse. Now, as it turns out, all of the channels that are involved in an action potential are closed at rest. So I'm going to put X's through them because they're not going to play a role here at rest. The third protein that's highlighted here in green is going to play a role. That uh, uh, protein is called the sodium potassium pump. And as its name implies, it's going to pump or actively transport sodiums and potassiums, force them to one side of the membrane so that they're highly concentrated. So as it turns out, what we're going to do is we're going to highly concentrate the sodiums out of the cell and highly concentrate the potassiums inside the cell. So as it turns out, for every ATP that a sodium potassium pump uh, uses, it's going to pump three sodiums out and two potassiums in. That doesn't really matter to me, but if you just wanted to note that, you could. Um, so there I'm showing that, and remember that active transport requires energy, and so for um, the sodium-potassium pump, it needs to be phosphorylated by an ATP molecule um, to do every pumping. Okay, and then so when we um, do a lot of that pumping, you'll notice that we have lots of sodium out here, though not every sodium, and we have lots of potassium in here, though not every potassium ion. And so we call such a setup polarized here at rest. Um, um, kind of a, a way to help remember that term is that if you have like a polarized political issue, um, you have lots of people on both sides who aren't really like talking to each other maybe. So you've got lots of potassium here on one side and lots of sodium here on the other side at rest. So you're doing work, you're spending energy at rest, but you're setting yourself up so that you can let those ions move. And we'll talk about that in the next video. So the last thing I just want to highlight then is sort of a graph that we're going to look at in the next two in the next video as well that kind of uh, models what's happening during an action potential. So we've got time here on the x-axis and notice that the time is in milliseconds so electrical signals are very quick events um, and we've got voltage on the y-axis. Voltage, uh, to, to do a very simplistic AP biology definition, is sort of a force that causes particles with charge to want to move, in a sense. And what we're really um, saying with this y-axis, um, when we create a graph like this, we're sticking an electrode into a neuron. So when you're giving a voltage, you always have to say which side you're kind of um, referring to. And so what I want you to know is that this really represents the voltage inside the neuron. That's uh, important to me. And then what we're really showing is that at rest, we're here. Um, all of this part of the graph is what happens during the action potential, which I'm going to talk about next video. And so all I want you to know from this is that at rest, the inside of the cell is very negative relative to the outside. You don't necessarily have to memorize negative 70 for me necessarily, but I do want you to know that it's negative inside. And we should try to talk about why that is. Uh, the answer is actually kind of complicated and, and goes beyond the scope of this introductory course. Um, but a sort of half answer that is sort of true but not the full answer is that you've got lots of particles inside the cell that are extremely negative, like DNA, like proteins. Um, and so those uh, uh, particles with lots of negative charges on them kind of make the overall cell negative, even though you've got lots of potassium uh, plus ions there at rest. So overall negative at rest, 
And uh, what we just tried to do in this video is I tried to set up kind of some broad structural regions, axons, dendrites, and cell bodies. And we tried to talk about what work is done at rest by the sodium potassium pump. All of the other channels are closed to diffusion. And so this creates a, a setup to where the neuron can uh, change that scenario when doing an action potential.